start, I would start by placing my sigillum breast. And before I drew it, I would take a burr, and I've already cut some of these so as to save a little time on the recording. And I would take an end cutting tapered diamond, and I might use that end cut to form a little ledge in this area. And I want this to be in at least a millimeter into the depth of the tooth, usually at the junction of the middle and cervical third. But you have to watch your occlusion. You have to mark your occlusion, and you have to keep the rest below it and know that a little bit of metal has to be on top of it. Then I would make sure that I prepare this to where this is a positive seat. You don't want the rest to fall off of this. And I would then remove any undercuts I have in this area right here because I went into the cast a little or into the tooth a little bit. I would remove any um, undercut that I had there because that partial denture has to seat straight down and it can't get into an undercut that's along this area so you have to remove any undercut that's in that area come up with a positive ledge that looks like a chevron and that is rounded at the top and I would go ahead and put my rest in red now I can almost tell I have still have a little undercut or I wouldn't be able to do that right there like that so I still have a little bit of undercut to remove up above it and I want my chevron shaped rest right here at the junction of middle and cervical third. I would then come on over and we called for an indirect retainer which is a rest on our central incisor. Same thing, you can use that inverted cone and come in like this from this angle and create yourself a ledge. The inverted cone does create a positive seat in there um, but I find it a little harder to control in the mouth upside down and all that good stuff um, than I do with a tapered diamond that is an end cutting where I can cut my little ledge with the end cut and then I remove by turning my burr sideways I remove any undercut that I have in that area so I prepare one on my Canine, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this so I'll remember to, to cut it in the patient's mouth. Over here for my clasp assembly on this, I have to remember that I've got some metal coming up over this edge, so I have to remove this some of this marginal ridge area in here for metal to get up into that tooth area without changing the occlusion. We have to worry about the occlusion. Then when I get in there, I'm going to prepare a spoon-shaped rest. And I do that often with a round bird. Now, you don't want a pothole. Rest are spoon-shaped. They're smooth. They're rounded. They're not like DO preps or MO preps. You don't want strong side walls. Or uh, you might have trouble seating your partial because it may not be in line with the path of draw of your partial itself. And then it has to have a positive seat. To, you can't have that perio probe slipping off of that rest, okay, or else you don't have a positive seat. And then I'm going to color my rest in with red again. My rest and my little sluice way just to point out what I've got to do in there. I don't take a sluice way through the buckle because I don't have an arm going through there, just a rest. So there's no sluice way to the buckle on this because it's not an embrasure class. Um, okay, now that I have that taken care of, I'm going to also look at my guiding planes because if I had a high survey line, I would be wanting to cut guiding planes in that area, but I appear to have a couple millimeters of space here, so I don't have to lower my survey line from the marginal ridge. It's already down there a little bit. I may take this down to give myself a little room for that wrought wire to come over there above survey line. So I may alter the tooth a little bit on that area so as to make room for my clasp arm to come above the survey line there. And um, I could resurvey that, but I'm pretty sure I, uh, you should resurvey it if you're doing it on a test. You would recreate your survey line just to make sure that you have in fact lowered it 
to the position that uh, you want it to be in. So I could resurvey that area. And I can see that I did move my survey line down to that point where I desired to move it. You need to have two millimeters of space above your survey line for the guide plate to be located and and contact that tooth helping to take that partial denture into position. All right, now let's look at how we're going to draw this one. We're going to have a, a marginal, I mean a guide plate coming up right here on the distal of that tooth right behind this cusp tip and at this point it's going to become got a uh, plating all along this anterior area when you don't have very many teeth left like this you're going to find now i got to have a little metal above my the guide plate covers the cingulum goes up to close off that embrasure space covers the cingulum and comes back up you don't want it to have it too high though because you've got to remember that it, it has to be below your occlusion on those incisors. And then that will come around my rest that I created here. There's my framework coming around that rest. And then at that point, it is going to come down and it's going to avoid the marginal gingiva on the maxillary arch by five millimeters. So I look at my marginal gingiva I know that I have to come down here to this point. That avoids food impaction in that area on the partial. And then on the distal of this, this is going to be an RPI system. So we call for a mesial rest, distal guide plate, dipping on the lingual and the eye bar. Our guide plate on a RPI system comes up and it's going to come up at a position where the tooth becomes a little bit smaller so as to help act as a reciprocal component. So it's going to come where the tooth is a little smaller and I just went up a little high. And it touches the tooth about a millimeter above my survey line. Now my survey line being so terribly low, I'm not going to take it right to the gingiva. I'm going to take it at about the middle of the tooth and come back down right behind my cusp tip right here. I'm going to go ahead and take that line off of there again. But the rule is for the RPI you want it one millimeter above your survey line touching that tooth in a guide plate that you've prepared that is at least two millimeters. So the guide plate has to be at least two millimeters. The guide plate comes one millimeter above um, the prepared guide plate area. So we keep this at about the um, two to three millimeter mark going down the back side of that denture. And then that guide plate comes on down here. This is this is where we're, we're going from right here. On the other side we had our guide plate. We're going to have a wrought wire that comes and it's going to come from this direction here it's going to come down and we want half of it. I've marked two points there for my O2 undercut and the wrought wire comes down. You want at least half of it under the survey line for good retention and I'm going to mark WW out here and it's going to be soldered back here but I'm going to wait until I draw my base attachment to determine uh, where the best place is to solder that wire. So we have so far this done. Next we're going to draw our base attachment or our major connector and here we have major connector coming along here. We need to have base attachment and teeth set over this area. On this canine it will come down at this distal lingual line angle of the canine and it comes straight down at least leaving enough room to set a premolar all in your base attachment and then that external finish line comes back it parallels the ridge and it comes back to a point uh, about like this um, for the hamular 
that we're not going into the hemular notch. We want acrylic resin to actually go into that hemular notch. So I may have taken it back just a little bit too far. Just a little bit too far. Because I want acrylic resin to go in there. I can adjust it if it's causing a problem. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw my acrylic resin. Because my acrylic resin would come across here. And it's not going to go down too far because I have a, an undercut right in here. So it's going to come across that ledge. And actually, if you want to show that undercut, you can actually survey, let the side of the lead put that mark of where the ridge is undercut by marking the side of the ridge with your surveyor. Okay? So I'm not going to take base attachment any lower than that. So I'm coming here, I mean my base, I'm coming along here and this is where my blue will end. Got a little undercut in that area. And my blue will come back up, come through hamular notch area. And it's going to join right at that point where I drew my external finish line. Now I can finish my base attachment, which will come up like this a little bit so that I have a nice butt joint right there. And then my base attachment will come like this. And I want it to be short of my, I want acrylic resin to be able to surround this. So this will come back up to my guide plate on that canine comes up to my distal guide plate right there now I can put the circles in it um, the circles are, are quite wide but I'm going to put a processing stop in this one so it's going to look something like this and I'll have another one and another one So there's my base attachment and my base. And one last thing to do, where it joins the major connector here, there will be an internal finish line on the inside that comes back like this. So that is what my base attachment would look like on this particular case and my external and internal finish line and the acrylic resin joining here and coming around like this and then we'd have just a little bit finish line right there where it joins it. On the other side I want to have a little bit of metal in here so I'm going to be coming down like this again with my base attachment. I'm going to leave enough room to set a tooth as wide as that canine. I came a little bit too far right here. I'm going to get rid of this little guy right below here. But I am trying to show you that there's a little uh, metal minor connector kind of in that area. So this will come back and I want that back to be covered with acrylic resin. <laughs> All right, so my base attachment is going to swing up a little bit, come on over here, and my base attachment will come forward and go up to this guide plate right here. I'm going to put my base attachment in here, so I'll have my big old loops. like that and my actual um, base will come down like this in blue come along to this undercut it'll come back into my hamular notch surrounding that base attachment and it will come to a nice little joint right here and at this point we'll have our internal finish line on that metal framework right in here 
our base, our major connector then has to come on over. Here's where my brown ended. So I'm going to come around my torus and come back up over here. So that is what my major connector would look like at this point. Can I put a hole in it? I could probably come up in here to this area and come on back. I gotta leave at least eight millimeters for my major connector back here. I need at least five in this area, four or five in that area. We're going to place the eye bar over on this side and we've marked the six millimeter mark below the marginal gingiva. And that is the position where the bottom of the bar will be located. It comes up, contacts at this point. This will all be blocked out below it by the laboratory technician. So it contacts at this point of 01 undercut and then comes up another two millimeters, two to three millimeters, so that there is a pod area touching the tooth, not just one little tip. And this comes back and joins our, our, our base attachment and this line really wouldn't be here at that point. It would just become confluent with our base attachment. We like to bring it to a point where it's a little bit thicker in the metal so that when it casts up it will cast properly into this clasp arm. want to point out again the, the components of a base of a RPI system is a mesial rest with a little bit of a sluice way here for this metal to come up and not be in occlusion with the opposing arch. It must dip down on the maxillary and avoid that marginal gingiva by five to six millimeters. It has to have the guide plate is drawn one millimeter above the survey line. Now our survey line is way down there, so our guide plate would probably be located down somewhat. We don't want all of that in contact with the teeth. So we're going to take our guide plate down a little bit. But there again, that bottom portion of the guide plate is blocked out uh, so that um, food and plaque can get uh, through that area. So probably about at the middle, if our guide, if our survey line is way down at the lower edge, we'll probably be at about the middle of the tooth with that guide plate. The guide plate must come right down right behind this cusp tip and it comes back to where the tooth becomes a little bit smaller so that it traps the tooth from moving to the lingual when this eye bar flexes into an undercut. Just a, a, one more discussion of indirect retainers. If we draw a fulcrum line across here, we want to prevent this from lifting up when sticky foods are eaten. So we go to the position farthest away from our fulcrum line, which is through our last two abutments through those rests. And the farthest point that we can go is the anterior in central incisor right in this position. So that acts as an indirect retainer for us. Wrought wire is soldered back here on this solid metal area and it is soldered. It comes forward, it comes up the distal surface and it originates from an occlusal direction so our rot wire originates there, it comes down, and we want at least half of that rot wire to be into our .02 undercut simply because it will need that in order to not get out of adjustment all the time. So we do put more of our rot wire clasp under the survey line than we do the cast circumferential. And then out on this side of the cast, we need to write wrought wire. In this case, I'm going to draw a um, modified T-bar just so you get a chance to see it. My modified T-bar would start where we have a strut right there. It would come forward. It comes up the surface. It goes above the survey line. 
and then it comes down. It either comes above the survey line or uh, above the survey line or right at the survey line and then it comes straight down to my six millimeter mark and swings back. So this is a modified T. It comes down, it comes at or above the survey line, swings down to my .01 undercut. But it cannot, won't touch the tooth any lower than that .01 undercut. My lines are a little squiggly here. I see if I can clean them up a little bit. That's what that modified T-bar would look like. Comes up to or slightly above, swings back into the .01 undercut. So here's a close-up. Wrought wire. Eye bar major connector. The other one that I drew, I just want to indicate the modified T-bar, which is basically like the I-bar. Now the modified T-bar calls for an embrasure rest, but in speaking with our other faculty, we're going to leave it with just a meso rest. If there was another premolar in front of it, it would be an embrasure rest.